What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Hustle or Stay Basic channel, the Invest or Stay Basic segment. As always, my name is KG and today, as you can tell by the title, we're taking a look at QSR. Shout out to Alan who dropped a comment and asked me to take a look at this. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoy this video, drop a thumbs up, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And let's get into it. So QSR is Restaurant Brands International, and that's the ticker symbol QSR, has a market cap of $23.4 billion and is down 12.5% over the last 12 months. As always in this video, we're gonna understand what the business does, what their revenue streams are, and I actually sat in on an hour-long fireside, fireside chat with Morgan Stanley to kind of understand where the business is at today and what they want to do in the future. So I'm going to share my summary on that as well and some valuation metrics, some analysts, estimates and stuff like that. I hope you enjoy it. And like I said, if you enjoy it, please subscribe and uh, drop a comment if you want me to take a look at any company that you're interested in. So QSR owns uh, three popular fast food chains. I'll get into that next slide. Uh, they have a 3.6% dividend yield of $2.69 a share. Uh, they are an essential business in Canada and in the U.S. And they've done really well over the past five years, up 67%. So I got this blurb from Yahoo Finance. Restaurant Brands International owns, operates, and franchises quick service restaurants under Tim Hortons, Burger King, and Popeye's brand names. So pretty big brands, Tim Hortons huge in Canada, uh, Burger King huge around the world, and Popeye's an emerging brand that uh, have a lot of people going crazy over their sandwich still. If you're wondering about the history of this company, they started off as Burger King, they acquired Tim Hortons in 2014 for $12.5 billion, and then in 2017, they basically stole Popeye's for $1.5 billion, which looks like an absolutely smoking deal at this moment, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's quickly take a look at the sales figures and earnings figures over the last couple of years. So this actually caught me by surprise because when I think of Tim Hortons, Burger King, and Popeyes, I'm thinking like a huge sales number. I'm thinking like over $10 billion. I don't know. This is just me. I know $5 billion is a lot to the average human being, me, me in particular as well. But for them to only do $5 billion a year with those three brands, that kind of caught me off guard. Let me know in the comments below if you thought they were doing more than $5 billion in sales. So as you can see, in 2019, they did $5.6 billion in sales, and that dropped by $600 million to $4.97 billion in 2020. And, you know, that's definitely due to the pandemic, but we'll get into that a little bit more. Their earnings dropped from $643 million to 486. That's a drop of 24%. So just to recap, sales are down 11% and earnings are down 24% year over year. On a quarterly basis, they seem to be doing over about 1.2 billion pretty consistently with this little hiccup here when uh, Canada was basically in, on lockdown and I think there were some lockdown restrictions in the U.S. as well. So let's go take a look at the different revenue streams, which would be Burger King, Tim Hortons, and Popeyes. So I made these little dinky graphs for you guys just so you can see the trend line of their sales and the number of restaurants out there. This kind of still caught me by shock because I thought Burger King was a massive brand. Just thinking about it, I've seen them all over the place. I always thought they went head to head with McDonald's, but for them to do $1.6 billion in 2020, that kind of caught me off guard. Now, that's not a huge drop-off because they did $1.65 billion in 2018. But just when I think of the brand, I think of a brand that does over $5 billion in sales. I mean, you have 18,000 restaurants. How, how are you only doing $1.6 billion? Uh, that caught me off guard. Let me know if you guys agree. So as far as the revenue stream, they make up 32% of the sales for Restaurant Brand International. And if you're not familiar with Burger King, you know they do burgers, home of the Whopper. Actually, might be my favorite burger. Uh, I'm getting a little bit hungry even just thinking about it. But yeah, they do burgers, fries, uh, fast food, uh, really not healthy stuff, but you know, it tastes great. So I think we have an idea of how they've been doing in sales. It doesn't look like a massive drop off in 2020, but... When you put in perspective that they've added restaurants, then yeah, it kind of does look like a pretty big drop off. Um, so 
that's pretty concerning. Let's go take a look at Timmy's. So again, if you're not familiar with Tim Hortons, they specialize in like coffee, tea, baked goods, sandwiches, stuff like that. I would say mainly snacks and coffee. Um, they experienced a massive drop off of $500 million in sales. Uh, if you remember in the previous slide, we had Burger King dropping off like about $180 million. So a much bigger drop off, but they also do make up 57% of the sales. In my opinion, the drop off is due to the lack of breakfast crowd. Everyone's not everyone, but a majority of people are working from home, no longer grabbing their you know, morning coffee, morning donut, morning croissant, man, those things add up, believe me. And uh, I think that's, that's definitely affected their sales and earnings in 2020. Now the dark horse of this company, and when I say dark horse, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, these guys are growing and growing at a very quick rate. You can see they did 200 million in sales in 2017, and they did 560 million in sales in 2020. So this is a huge growth company, Popeyes. If you're not familiar with them, they do fried chicken, chicken sandwiches, chicken everything, and also some fish products as well, fried fish, they also have a fried flounder sandwich. Try saying that quick, quickly. F fried flounder. Uh, it's basically a fish sandwich to kind of go side by side with their super popular spicy chicken sandwich. Now, I think if Popeyes uh, had a drop off in sales, like I would, I would imagine QSR would be down like 30%. But I think what's holding them up is the growth of Popeyes today. And earlier in the video, I mentioned that that one and a half billion dollar price tag to buy Popeyes was a steal. I still truly believe that because they did over $500 million of sales. And that's basically what Shake Shack did. And Shake Shack, which is publicly traded, is traded for, I think, a market cap of $5 billion plus. So that's that's just great value on uh, restaurant brands international for acquiring them. So I mentioned I sat in on one of these chats, the Morgan Stanley fire, fireside chat with the CEO and CFO. I mean, come on, I got to keep you guys informed. I got to go listen to these and watch these uh, conversations. And I think it was super helpful to kind of get an idea of what they want to do in the future and how they plan on growing. The moderator from Morgan Stanley asked some pretty cool questions in terms of saying like, how do you plan on growing Tim Hortons? And how do you plan on growing Burger King? Like Popeyes is doing well, but what are you going to do to grow those two brands? The CEO, Jose Sill, uh, said some cool things. He said, we, although we were a leader in coffee and baked goods in Canada, we've been acting like the challenger, the challenger to McDonald's, the challenger to Starbucks. And he says, we got to get into the leader perspective and not the challenger perspective. And we got to stop offering all these random limited time offers, all these random variants of foods, you know, and focus on what people like. They want great coffee and great baked goods. So that's what he said. And uh, one of the cool things that he mentioned or <laughs> really nasty things he mentioned is they were using 40 year old coffee brewing technology uh, with non-filtered water. Uh, and they just changed that recently. So they're saying the coffee is going to taste a lot better now. Uh, they're focusing on making their coffee taste uh, better and their snacks and baked goods be become more fresher. How they came to this realization is uh, they went on a road show all across Canada, you know, asking for customers' opinions. And basically everyone around Canada was like, hey, focus on your coffee and focus on your baked goods and we'll come. So that's what they plan on doing in the future. So for Burger King, uh, the CEO said he has to, we have to work on the value proposition of the food that we have. And what he means by that is you can get the Popeye's chicken sandwich, I'm assuming in the US, for $3.99. And he says that's great value because the sandwich is delicious. So they want to come up with more offers like that, but at Burger King, where people will come to Burger King to try their sandwiches. Another thing they're trying to focus on is, you know, better quality. And I like that because they're saying, hey, we don't, we just released, you know, the no artificial ingredients uh, Whopper. Um, and they're trying to get better quality meats in their burgers, which you know, sounds good to me, but then also kind of makes me wonder like, hey, what have I been eating for all these years? And then a third item is they want to invest in breakfast and media. Now, personally, I just don't think this is a great idea because like <laughs> who wants to go to Burger King for breakfast? But let's see, uh, I, I won't knock it until I try it. And for Popeyes, we've already shown that they've been growing really fast and there's been huge demand. And he said, basically, we just need to get more restaurants out there. People need to get their hands on the Popeyes chicken sandwich, the Popeyes chicken tenders. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll sh soon realize that Popeyes should be a household name and a favorite. I think from a product perspective, I, I tend to agree with most of the things that he said. But 
one thing he also mentioned was, you know, getting synergies across all three brands. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, digital drive throughs And I didn't even realize this, but the boards at like a Burger King or a Popeye's or a Tim Hortons, they're like these little plastic things that they flip over. And they said by making them digital boards, they can cater the boards to see what customers choose more often based on how they align the pictures. And this is pretty cool because I didn't even think about that. And uh, they said if they could try some different tests using digital boards, it'll make it easier to kind of uh, a increase customer spend on the products and also get customers to try some different things. So I thought that was pretty smart and cool. And then the other two things is uh, loyalty programs, which they started with Tim's and he wants to introduce uh, loyalty programs with Popeye's, which I'd totally be on board for and one for uh, Burger King as well. And also double drive throughs uh, so they can handle the orders and the frequencies easier and, uh, you know, have a quick and easy customer experience at drive through. So that was pretty cool for me, like just sitting there and listening to it. I I got hungry, to be honest, but I think uh, there's a bunch of great ideas there. And uh, another cool couple of facts that he mentioned is there's now 100 locations of Tim Hortons in China and they opened their first Tim Hortons location in Switzerland. So they're growing around the world like there's nothing but growth and upside for this company and the brands based on what he's saying. And I tend to agree for the most part. So what are the analysts saying? Well, the analysts are saying, hey, this is overpriced at the moment. It should be a $64 per share stock and we're all the way at 76. So they're saying there's some downside to it, but they're also saying that, hey, like, look, we did 5.6 billion in sales in 2019, which I'm calling pre-pandemic, and they believe they'll get awfully close uh, in 2021 and surpass it in 2022. So I think there is some growth ahead for Tim Hortons, but maybe the current valuation just does not make sense. So before I even took a look at the analyst estimates, I decided to take do some valuation on my on my own. And uh, what I what I picked as a metric was the price to book ratio. And what that is is uh, if you're not familiar with the book value, it's basically the assets minus the liabilities, which is what people call the shareholders' equity. Um, so when you divide that by the outstanding shares, you have book value per share. And when you take share price and divide divide it by the book value per share, you get you get a number and that's what we call the price to book ratio. And what I've realized is Tim Hortons has, sorry, I call it Tim Hortons. What I've realized is restaurant brand internationals looks pretty undervalued when their book value is under seven or at least under seven and a half. And for the most part, it's above eight right now. And I think that's a little bit too rich. You can see like over here, it was at the $110 per share mark. And that's just a little too high for uh, restaurant brands national. So if you could get this at, you know, seven and a half book value, seven book value, hey, six and a half, that would be amazing. I think that's pretty good value for the long run. So after looking at the price to book, I felt like, hey, the price per share right now seems a little bit rich. But what I decided to do is, Take another look and compare it to someone in another company in the industry, which would be Yum. Uh, Yum owns, just sounds funny to say, Yum Brands owns uh, KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. And I just wanted to put the metrics side by side. And to be honest, either or doesn't look significantly undervalued to the other. Uh, Looks like it's just market is priced them at this level, but I just don't think it's a fair value. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. Uh... This could be bullish or this could be bearish uh, when it comes to Perishing Square. If you're not familiar with Perishing Square, it's a hedge fund owned by, you know, renowned value investor Bill Ackman. And it showed that in uh, Q4 2020, they did trim off a little bit of their QSR position. They went from 16% of their portfolio to 14.99. So you could be like bearish, like, oh, no, they're trimming their portfolio. But I think it's still probably more bullish long term because by keeping QSR as 15% of the portfolio, it shows that Bill Ackman and Perishing Square do believe in this company and management over the long run, which is good. Something bearish is QSR made Tim Hortons roll up the rim, go totally digital, and uh, a lot of customers are not liking that. I mean, it makes sense because you know we're living in a pandemic and you don't wanna con- get you know cross contamination by ripping off those rims, but a lot of customers are not liking that and feel that Tim Horns is kind of forcing everyone to start using the app. So earlier in the video, I mentioned 
leveraging the three brand synergies and it looks like burger king is leveraging popeye's chicken sandwich synergy here by kind of basically copying it or making a version of their own so they can drive some traffic in burger king so i think that's probably a reason to be bullish less more than uh, bearish but it could go either way. So to summarize, I agree with the CEO's direction in investing more in tech, digital boards, apps, loyalty programs, but I think there will be some short-term expenditures due to that. And uh, currently at this valuation of $77, it seems a little bit rich. If you can get the stock under 70, I think that's good value long-term. Uh, but right now I'm not buying. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you hold QSR, what you think about the future. Uh, you know, what's your favorite burger? Let me know in the comments below. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you subscribe and I'll see you guys later. See ya.